Good morning, Intersection Church. Welcome to our online service today. We are so thankful that you guys can join us. It has been a blessing to be able to meet online for this time being, but next week we will be meeting in person and we are so excited to see you guys' faces. If you guys want to find out more about our church, you can go to intersectionchurch.org and while you're there, you can find the giving tab where you can contribute your tithes and offering. Now, before we get into today's message, I want to pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time that we can come and we can worship you. Lord, as Pastor J.D. gives this word, I ask that this word uh, doesn't just stop here, Lord, but this word uh, uh, pierces hearts, uh, that this word convicts the people, Lord, and that this word can change the world. Lord, I ask that everyone who is hearing my voice right now, God, that you will bless them in a special way today. Lord, that you show up and show out, uh, and they have nothing uh, but joy in their hearts. In your name I pray, amen. Good morning, Intersection Church. Thank you guys once again for hopping on online as we can't meet in person, but I'm thankful we can still meet this way. I hope I find you healthy. I hope that you're resting up on your couch or in your kitchen, maybe eating breakfast, maybe you made some coffee due to the cold wintery season, but it's looking beautiful and white outside, maybe some hot chocolate. Regardless of it, I'm happy. I hope that today you are finding peace. In this Advent season this week, we're talking about peace. And more specifically, we're going to talk about peace this side of heaven. So go ahead and put in the comment, I want peace on this side of heaven. Go ahead and type it on now. As Stephen Furtick would say, put it in the chat. Now, I want to start off with telling you guys a little story of little JD, as I always love to do, uh, because he for sure still entertains my mind today. And uh, one of the stories I want to tell you today comes from when I was in fourth grade. And when I was in fourth grade, I think you're around like nine or ten years old. Um, we had this project. And the project that we had was this project that was called like a time vault project. And in this time vault project, what we had to do was we would take a shoebox and we had to put a list of, 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 we had to make a list of items that were valuable to us at that time that we would be willing to put in this time vault. And um, I can remember I put some baseball cards in there I, and football cards in there. I had a baseball that was signed by a random Indians player. Love the Indians, still love the Indians today. Um, and I had another significant thing I remember because it was a bunch of random stuff that we put in there. I had my Barry Sanders jersey. I loved the Barry Sanders jersey because who didn't love Barry Sanders at that time? Ten seasons, over a thousand yards rushing in a row. Like, no one had did that before. Now, I still don't think anybody has done that. Still to this point, he retired early, but that's something different. But yeah, I had my Barry Sanders jersey in it. But the teacher also said what she wanted us to put into this time vault was what we wanted to be when we grew up. Now, church, friends, and family. If you know me, you, knew, you know I grew up a church kid, and I was very churchy. So when the teacher told us to write down a list of things that we want to be when we grow up or what we want to accomplish when we grow up. Number one on my list was, I want to be saved. On my list at this point in time, I wrote, what I want to be when I grow up is saved. I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because at this age, I was terrified. And I mean terrified of going to hell. It could have something to do with my Aunt Doris who had us read the book of Revelations at such a young age, and you have all these images of dragons and monsters popping out of the sea and fire coming from heaven and burning you up and people riding on horses and coming to take out a third of the earth and all this other stuff. But regardless of what it was, I mean, I was like petrified of going to the hell. I was petrified of the rapture because I wasn't saved at the time, at the age of nine and 10 years old. And I was just so fearful, so fearful of hell. I remember one time I thought of the tornado siren that was going off was actually one of the trumpets that was blowing that Jesus was coming back. Like I was so churchy. So on my list, I wrote down that I want to be saved because I don't want to go to hell. And I realized at such a young age, I was so motivated to escape two things because I was so fearful of a thing. I wanted to be saved so that I could, that I could make it to heaven because I was so fearful of hell. 
of uh, the eternal fire and burning and all those things and images that were in my mind that, you know, that I'm thinking about at a young age, it made it like almost crippled me to a point to where it's like, I need to be saved. I have to be saved. I have to experience heaven and all the things of heaven. Like, uh, the joy that comes, there's no weeping, there's no sickness, there's all these things. And ultimately that there, there's this peace that you can find resting in the hope of going to heaven and for me, it was more so I didn't have to go to hell. But isn't it just like us as human beings to always want to escape to something because we're so fearful of something else that sometimes is crippling us? Like right now in this season, a lot of times we think about Christmas as this wonderful time of the year, as the song says, and it is a wonderful time of the year. I love, you know, the to we just put up our tree last week and the lights and being able to have a daughter that's looking at all of these things. It's like a, a wonderful, magical, blessed time. If you don't, if, if you church and, and if I say magical, you think I'm witchcraft, all that stuff. I having a blessed time putting up the Christmas tree, right? And anyways, it's a great time. But for a lot of people right now, this season, they get seasonal depression because maybe they have lost a lot, uh, a loved one that they didn't have from last year. That they, that they were able to experience this wonderful Christmas season with, but they're not here this year. Maybe it's the, the family that can't afford to get gifts or can't afford to give their children everything that they want. Maybe it's the person that's been struggling with their family or whatever it may be. This season isn't as wonderful for some, for some people. And the only thing they're thinking about, if we can just make it to January, if I could just get past this Christmas season, I'm going to be okay. And we try to, and we rest in finding our peace in what's next and what's going to happen in January. And then in January, we get anxious about all the new things that we're going to tell the standards that we want to live by of losing weight and saving more money. And then you find stress then. Then you want to get to February. Then you go to February and find out you don't have a Valentine. And then you don't have a Valentine. It, there's always going to be the next thing. And I, and I have found that a lot of times, even in my own life, I can be so crippled by one season of life and look so forward to another. But just as JD was so fearful as hell, uh, so fearful of hell that he wanted to seek after heaven, God's plan was never for us to look at heaven as this place of escapism. His plan was never for us to look at heaven as this place that we get to escape to and we get to leave this earth. And it's something that all I'm doing is just living for the for tomorrow or the next day or the next day or the next day of when I can be raptured up or taken up into heaven and be with God, our savior, who is going to have a place for me where there's no sickness, where there's no worry, where there's no disease and all of that. That's not what heaven is. Is for Although all of those things are great and although that is going to be the final resting place and it's going to be a beautiful thing, in this Advent season, I want us to understand that God truly wants us to have peace on this side of heaven. We only get one life. We only get one life to really give God our praise through living a life of peace in the midst of our trouble, in the midst of our hurt, in the midst of what's, what can worry us. We only get to serve God with our lives through a life of peace on this side of heaven. When we get to heaven, there's not going to be anything for us to stress about. There's going to be angels singing. There's going to be streets paved with gold. There's going to be awesome things happening. But God never intended for heaven to be this place of escape. And so with that why can't we focus today about saying, God, how can I live a life of peace on this side of heaven? On earth as it is in heaven. This was Jesus' prayer. He says, when you pray, I want you to pray like this. On earth as it is in heaven. Our job as Christians, as believers, is to actually be conduits of peace in the midst of trouble, in the midst of chaos. And we actually get to serve God with that type of posture of showing him that we can live a life in the midst of all of these things, that we can still have peace, that we can still have peace. And that's what takes me to the book of Matthew. 
if you look at the book of Matthew, the theme of the book of Matthew is the kingdom of heaven. The book of Matthew is the first of the four gospels. And then the first four gospels, all of it is, is talking about in a consistent way. The kingdom of heaven is the central theme of Jesus's mission in, uh, of all the gospels. Like that's the, that is the main central point is that Jesus represents the kingdom of heaven. And when you go into the book of Matthew, this is the central theme. And you see that so quickly because I don't know about you, but there's only two accounts in the four gospels that talks about the earlier life of Jesus. It's the book of Matthew and the book of Luke. For some of you who may not know that you'll only see the early accounts of Jesus as a child being born in Matthew and then Luke. Matthew was more so a book that was supposed to appeal to the Jews. And in that, in the first chapter, you see this genealogy. And the reason why they show you that genealogy, because genealogies were really important to the Jewish people. And so in this genealogy, you see the connection. Jewish people came from the father, Abraham. And you see the opening of the first chapter of Matthew, who was, which was written to appeal to the Jews, this connection from Abraham to Jesus. And in that connection, it's showing that Jesus has the lineage of a king that the Jews were looking for in this time of chaos when they were underneath the Roman oppression and they were looking for a king to reunite Israel so that Israel can be this once as as it was before which was this dominating country that God had blessed once it was with David like it was with David and with Solomon right and so you see this in the book of Matthew, if, that these Jewish people that the book of Matthew was supposed to appeal to, you see this genealogy in the first chapter. Then the second chapter, you see this background of Joseph and Mary and Joseph getting a dream and uh, getting this vision and Mary being pregnant and, this, and, and the birth of Jesus. And then it escalates quickly in chapter three. It goes from Jesus being birthed to Then in chapter three, it jumps. Jesus was a child. And then you get to chapter three where it opens up with John the Baptist. And this is what it says. It says, in those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, remember in the book of Matthew, the central theme was the kingdom of heaven. And John the Baptist, and the reason why I think is it goes from Jesus being this child in Nazareth to jumping to John the Baptist uh, saying that the kingdom of heaven is near is because Jesus was the representation of the kingdom of heaven. And so in this, you see that it gets quick right at chapter three to the theme of the whole book of Matthews, which is the kingdom of heaven. And it's saying that John the Baptist is speaking on behalf of Jesus. And he says, repent saying, repent from your ways, which repent means to turn away, to turn from the ways that you've been looking at things to shift your lens. And he's saying that the kingdom of heaven is near and who he's talking about is Jesus. So he's saying all of the things that have that have been taking your attention, all of the things that you are worried about, all of the things in your life that are causing you strife, all just everything. He says, I want you to turn your focus. I want you to repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And the kingdom of heaven at that time was Jesus. So John the Baptist is saying to people, right now, I need you guys to focus on Jesus. Today is a good day for us to focus on Jesus, as John the Baptist so quickly said, that it's time for us to turn from the things that we are worried about. It's time for us to turn from the hell that has made us feel like we're wanting to escape from this season and go to the next season and put our minds on Jesus. And this is the reason why we want to focus on Jesus, because this is what Jesus says. It's right after he has been speaking to his disciples about who he is, this king, this Messiah. He's telling him about who the Holy Spirit is and why he has to leave and to send this comforter of the Holy Spirit. And his disciples are finally realizing that, Jesus, you're from God and you are this this person that we need to center our, our lives around. And then Jesus picks up and he says, I have told you all of these things so that in me you may have peace. So that in me, you may have peace and in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. 
So pretty much what Jesus is saying is in this world, you will have trouble. But if you rest in me, if you focus on me, and if you believe in me, you will have peace. You will have peace this side of heaven, and you can have peace this side of heaven. Why? Because I have overcome the world. So John the Baptist is saying, repent, and you need to focus on Jesus. And then Jesus is telling us when we put our focus on him, I need you right now in this moment to rest in me. And if you rest in me, if you focus on me, if you forget about a lot of the things that are consuming your mind, the hell that you're going through, and you shift your lens to a thankfulness and rest in me, I will give you peace. I will give you peace. Why? Because I have overcome the world. Every temptation, every lust of the eye, every lust of the flesh, every portion of pride of life that's there, I have overcome it all. Although you may have given in to some things, maybe pride has taken over in your life, maybe anxiousness has taken over in your life, maybe depression has taken over. If you can shift your lens, if you can repent and look and focus on me in this Advent season, you can rest in me. You can rest in me. And I love that he says, in this life, you will have trouble. In this life, you will have sorrow. In this life, you will have seasons that you feel like you can't wait to get to the next season. But yet, you can still have peace. If you rest in me, you can have peace. On this side of heaven, you can have peace. And I feel so strongly that's for somebody today. You keep thinking that you need to get to the next portion of life in order for you to feel comfortable where you are. But God is saying to you, if you just rest in Jesus, that he will give you rest. He will give you ultimate rest. So if you're struggling to find peace in this season, the first thing you need to do is look to Jesus in prayer. Jesus wasn't above prayer. As Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, if you look at his life, he always would sneak away and go to prayer. And when he was in the garden, when he was anxious and he was having this time before the Lord, it says that he went to God and prayed. Expecting that his father was going to listen right now in this season where I know for a lot of you, it's hard for you to find peace. We need to go to the father in prayer. You say, Pastor, you've talked about this for the past I don't even know long. You always seem to come to the same ending points. It's because sometimes we, continue, we need to continue to go back to the basics. If you're struggling to find peace, you have to fight against not wanting to pray, to fight against the, the, the inconsistency of not wanting to go to God. If you're not a believer, I want to challenge you to pray to God because I serve a God who says, if you ask, if you seek and you knock, he will answer your questions. He will open the door. If you seek, you will find him. If you have questions in your heart and you go to him in prayer, he'll answer you. The second thing we need to do, we need to look to God through reading his word. Look to God through reading his word. As simple as that. Sometimes I know that we want to read a lot of the self-help books and we want to watch uh, uh TEDx about emotions and psychology and we want to go to all of these other resources to to give us comfort or for us to find peace or the rest in or whether it may be certain drugs or maybe it could be certain addictions or whatever it is. But sometimes if you can simply read the word of God to get to know the character of who God is and who Jesus is, you can find peace. The next thing you can do is you can look to Jesus through his people. Right now, so many times we isolate ourselves, especially during a pandemic where we find ourselves of having the excuse to isolate ourselves and having the excuse to separate ourselves. And there's so many people that I know and that want to figure things out by themselves, but Jesus has called people to be his hands and feet and there's people and there's a community. If, if you don't have one and you just happen to pop on this video, there are people at the Intersection Church who want to connect with you. There are people who want to love on you, who want to show you the character of Jesus with their lives. 
If you're needing to find peace, it can be a phone call away. Sometimes it could even be a text away. Just getting something off of your chest. It can be as practical of you even talking to someone who has hurt you. A lot of times we feel like we need to be so strong that we can't even be hurt. That's part of the pride of life. That the Bible says in order for us to overcome the world, it says that we have to overcome the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those three things is what hinders us from really getting the peace. They really hinder us from getting the peace. And sometimes in our life we can be so so prideful that we should have it all together and we should be so strong and everything should be in order that we can't even reach out to people and say, you know what, I, I just feel broken. I just feel lost. Hey, well, that conversation we had last week really hurt. Like, I understand who you are and the character of who you are. But hey, I need you. I need to let you into my life because maybe if I let you into my life, you can treat me a little bit different. And you can understand what my needs are and then you can find peace in your relationships. You can find peace in your connections. You can find peace on this side of heaven. And th the next thing we can, can look to Jesus in our worship. Look to Jesus in our worship. Now, the Bible says what we do with our whole lives is what is worship to him. How we live our lives when we're conscious of Jesus in every aspect of our life, that is our true and proper worship to him. So in your day to day, you need to say, I need to look to Jesus. And if you don't know who Jesus is and you don't know who his character is, this is why we read our word. This is why we pray. And this is why we connect with the community who stands for Jesus. But if you're struggling to find peace, it's so important that you can look to Jesus in worship and what you do with your total life, whether that's with your voice and singing or whether it's with how you talk to a coworker, how you talk to your husband or how you talk to your children. Satan right now wants to whisper little lies that you can't find peace because you don't have it together, because you, you're not going to be able to get all the gifts that your kids want, because your finances are terrible, because you're sitting at home with COVID, isolated from everybody because you're sick, that whatever reason, you don't deserve to have peace in this moment. But whatever list that you have of things that make you scared, things that make you fearful, things that, you're, that make you just want to get to the next step, that make you just want to escape to heaven, God is saying that that is the very reason that makes you qualified to rest in him. Those things that you're fearful of, those things that have caused you hurt, those things that make you feel broken, those are the very things of why you can find peace in Jesus. Because he's not expecting for you to be perfect, but in him you find your perfection. In this world you will have trouble, but if you rest in me, you will have peace. I know that we live in a chaotic world. I know it. That, it, that Christmas season doesn't put a pause on all of the things that's going on in your life. That this Advent season of this expectancy of Jesus and the Messiah doesn't, doesn't still mean that you're not going to have to go through things and have things that you need to do. But if you can rest in Jesus and if you can repent and put your focus on who Jesus is, if you can find out who this, this real life is, human being person was who was also fully deity and fully God. If you can find out and get to him and, and grow a relationship in him, you will have peace that surpasses all understanding. That surpasses all understanding. And this is why Jesus' disciples could find peace after realizing that Jesus had come from God, that they can have peace, whether that meant that they're, they're, they were going to be hung, whether that meant that their head was going to get chopped off, whether that meant that they were going to lose their life for Christ, they could walk in authority and walk in peace because they knew who Jesus was. Because they know who Jesus was. If you know who Jesus is, you can have peace. Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them, 
for they know not what they do. And what he was saying, and for me in my heart of what he's saying right now in this season, that if they would have known who Jesus was and focused on who Jesus was instead of being distracted by all the other things and what they had set up in their heart and just focused on him, that they wouldn't have put him on that cross. But thankfully, they did put him on that cross because when he died, he gave up his spirit. And he said that he had to leave so that he could send the comforter. And that through those actions, he has now sent a comforter to you so that you can find peace in this season. I love you and God bless you. Focus on Jesus because you can have peace on this side of heaven. And you only get one life to do that. I hope you guys enjoyed that message by Pastor JD. I know that I did. And before you guys leave, I just want to pray over you guys. So if you will pray with me, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this word that Pastor JD had to share with us. Lord, I ask that this message does not fall on deaf ears, but it falls on fertile hearts, Lord, and that this message uh, will grow. It will grow in our lives. It will grow in our households. It will grow in our neighborhoods, our communities, God, that, that we can be peace. We can find ourselves at peace in a world of of so much chaos, God. We love you. We thank you. In your name I pray, amen. Enjoy your guys' Sunday.